Good to know you're still with us. Time for us to take a look at the papers this morning to make sense of what's beyond uh, the screamers that we see across the newspapers. Uh, yes. We have rejoining us on the breakfast this morning, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Yetok. He is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're kicking off with stories on the uh, Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, of course, uh, the first one there that you can see boldly is from the Southwest Ministers asking for a probe um, of the military's uh, role. It says, uh, Lecky, Southwest Ministers want role of military probed. ICC begins probing to shooting of NSAS protesters in Nigeria. Governor Songwo Lu uh, signs executive order on Lagos rebuilding plan. Also, Human Rights Commission panel receives 150 petitions. A few other stories this morning. Protect lives and property of Muslims in the Southeast, South, South. Uh, NSCIA tells IGP and DSS. Three killed as a cultist hold Lagos communities hostage. Uh, government using hunger as a weapon to break our ranks, says ASU. Uh, says ASU, I beg your pardon. Trump versus Biden, still too close to call. U.S. Senate gets uh, first Nigerian-American congressman. Nigerian wins U.S. State Assembly uh, race. It also says here on the Nigerian Tribune, Nigeria must restructure before next elections. Southern and Middle Belt leaders insist. One or two other stories. Mysterious deaths rise to 30 in Delta communities as the F FEC approves 84 billion naira for FCT or your Bomasho roads. Uh, INEC may kick off e-voting with an Anambra election next year. These are the lead stories we can find on uh, the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Ezekiel Nyai talk. Let's uh, hear from you. Um, well, uh, um, again, uh, if I appear a little dull, please um, forgive me. I've had a good time um, over the night uh, celebrating my 32nd wedding anniversary. Uh, today. So <laughs> I hope I can be as uh, articulate as I ought to be. Back to the issues um, in the Tribune. The very first that catches my attention is um, asking for the probe of the role of the military. I think that we should wake up and smell the coffee. We are getting daily, um, there's, there's a certain mindset that that bothers me. I, I was somewhere in the US and um, I discovered that in the aircraft, people started clapping, 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 clapping. And I, I kind of just woke up to look what was happening. There were young soldiers boarding the aircraft and people actually clapped and stood up. The military is so respected. The military is so honored. The military is so exalted. But Reverse that to Nigeria. Nigerians are getting really fed up with the military. We are, we, are, we are sick and tired of the military. And before the military loses respect, which shouldn't be because these are people that lay their lives down to get us saved, the generality of the military. But the leadership of the military, having been in power for so long in this country and still insisting on militarizing operations, they have chipped the military and they have made the military to become like irritant before Nigerians. I think there's need for a very, very, very complete re-strategizing, restructuring, realignment, reorientation of the military in Nigeria. They need to wake up and know that Nigerians are actually getting to a point where we are. We don't even run a democracy right now. Look of all the presidents we've had from 1960 till date. Only one and a half, I would say, uh, uh, President Yaradua was just there for a very little time, and uh, uh, President Jonathan, these are the two non-military people. The rest are the military, military. Go to the governor's military, military. Go everywhere, military, military. And we're like, are we running a democracy? And you know, the military mentality and the democracy mentality are two different mentalities. Military is order. Do it all my way or the highway. But democracy is, you know, negotiation is understanding. And even with Mr. President, you can see that that military thing of bloody civilian, who am I, why should I talk to you? Just follow my orders. The ministers, do this, do that. We really need to bring our military back to the path of 
honor of respect. So, so I want that is to, why I the want people to... are so bothered on probe the role of the military. Yeah, can you hold on, the... uh, sir? I, I want you to, uh, still on the same discussion. I, I want you to share your thoughts on the reaction of the Southwest uh, uh, leaders now, like uh, it's been said on the on the newspaper, and then compare that with what um, the northern governors and uh, leaders, um, the statement that they released a few days ago, saying that they, of course, want the uh, NSAS protesters, uh, or rather that the NSAS protest was uh, um, targeting uh, regime change. Um, so it seems like there's conflicting narratives from these two sides of the country. How can we avoid that and be on the same page? The way we can avoid that and be on the same page is to understand that the mentalities are different. The Northern mentality is that of, I, I, I don't want to use a derogatory word. You know, a, they are like a conquered people by their leadership uh, because of the tradition, you know. And um, in the South, we are, uh, we are more uh, autonomous. We are more independent. We're more like um, somebody, like the Igbos. They say Igbo doesn't have a king, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I to interpret a literal meaning. Do you understand <laughs> me? I'm sure that um, the lady seeing, is laughing understands uh, what I mean. I just Everybody, said that's it why, for you. Virtually in every, virtually in every uh, Igbo community, you hear autonomous. That word autonomous is so rampant. So in the South, we are thinking, look, we don't want people to, to lead us by the nose. We want you to discuss with us. In the North, they are like, you can't touch our leader, you can't touch our king, you can't touch our this. Do you understand me? There's that, there's that almost subservient. And, and yet, I have interacted with the Northerners more than the Southerners. And these guys are extremely intelligent, articulate. What we just need is something to free them, and you'll be amazed how productive that the North will be. Right. How can you say? Okay, um, let's see if we can um, check in with the punch, the big one okay. here um, is PDP APC clash over FG's fresh plans. Man demands caution. Uh, that's about a 2021 proposed six trillion Naira loans. Uh, there are two riders to that story, Buhari, has insatiable appetite for loans, will soon borrow from Togo. That's a sarcastic PDP. And the APC is saying, is saying opposition party disturbed where succeeding where it failed. There's always a response. Um, let, let's take you up uh, on that first, yeah, and yeah. then I would it, like it, to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. For, for, for the population that we have and the budget that we run, it is, it, 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 uh, it's terrible. It's awful. It, it's not, it cannot bring growth. It cannot bring productivity. I am one person that will ask Nigerians to go and borrow $2 trillion. I am one person that would say so. In the, south, in the housing subsector alone that I work in, if you bring a trillion dollars, let me not say a trillion, 500 billion dollars, I will tell you where to put it, how to put it, and in 10 years, you'll be amazed where we'll be in this country. But there's a snag in it. There is no transparency in government. There is no accountability in government. As a result, all the monies that we have borrowed become drain pipes that put a burden in coming generations. Now, I, I, I fear that if we are not careful, you see, borrowing this money for me is not a problem. Why am I borrowing money to do a rail line to China, uh, to, to Niger? I mean, what, if you sit down and do, bring experts on development, developmental economists, and put them down and say, what do we need to grow in the North? I'm talking North. I can assure you that if you list the first five items, a rail line to Niger will not be one of them as top priority to enhance the productivity of the North. So <clears throat> we are taking state, state, state apparatus and almost personalizing it, in my opinion. So the time has come when we need to bring in experts and run government professionally. Government is so important, it cannot be run on the whims and caprices of whoever is a leader, whoever is a leader. 
we need to reject, reassess, we need to reform, reformat our governance processes so as to become more target oriented, more focused. Okay. So this loan, while I will want to say we need the loan, I need you to come and interface with me, have a town hall meeting, dialogue and convince me why my money should go into a particular venture. Above all, all I want you to give me a breakdown, do a, an analysis, do a returns on what you have borrowed already. If everything is shrouded in secrecy and you want to borrow more money, there's no way I'm going to clap for you to do it. All so right. I think in the federal government, time, borrowing is not bad. Look. We need to borrow a lot of money. If I was Mr. President, the amount of money I will borrow will be mind-boggling. Uh, but in the interest of each time, one please, uh, let's have uh, look at other um, that we yes. headlines on the paper. Uh, there's uh, the topical one from yesterday. FG Asu um, talks deadlocked again. Parties yeah. clash on 30 billion naira allowance. And then we have uh, the U.S. Um, election captured on the front page of the punch just above the masthead. Uh, we have yeah. Trump considers legal battle as Biden leads in U.S. presidential election. Uh, there are a couple of writers to that story um, that might uh, uh, pique your interest. Uh, more headlines here. Um, running three universities, draining our resources. That's a Dolu speaking. Uh, damaged facilities. Southwest ministers ask FG to assist Lagos. And then this sad one about the journalist that was shot, uh, the punch is reporting an update and that is, uh, they're saying that the grieving mother is crying for justice after police shot her son uh, dead. There are other headlines there, but let's, um, let's take on, uh, I'd like you to speak uh, in no particular order, the ASU situation, the Trump election and the assistance yeah. uh, to Lagos yeah. State. Yeah, the, the, I would like to start with ASU. I, I want to say that if you look at the input and the output on a yearly basis, even if there were no strikes and the problems where you realize that maybe about 500,000 people are graduating and about the same amount are being taken for a country of about 200 million, when you look at the workforce that we need and the education factor that we need, everything tells us that we are not doing things right. Now, on one hand, we say that the federal government is either not funding education very well. On the other hand, we say maybe ASU is asking for what is unrealistic. We have set of people, unfortunately, I will not be too kind with ASU this time. I think that ASU is not living with the times. I keep saying this. I don't know if I could say this enough. Now, was it Harvard or, or Oxford, one of the universities, said that in the next, you know, you, know have, you have three types of campuses, okay? You have the virtual, you have the physical, and you have the hybrid, okay? And he says that in about 10 years, by 2030, virtually over, um, well, there was a very staggering figure, over 70% of the institutions will be on the virtual. Now, we don't have that backbone, but we need to start Thinking differently. When you have a, a university that occupies maybe uh, 20, 30 hectares with all the facilities and infrastructure that must be maintained, now this is no longer the new world order. This is no longer the global trend. How can we devote this money not into servicing infrastructure, but creating the new backbone for the online learning. It's going to take a process. But the fact is that have we started a transition program? Where is the Ministry of Education in all these things? Because ASU is asking us to give them what would come to over um, a trillion uh, naira, the equivalent. And the question is, where is that going to come from? Okay. On the other hand, the federal government themselves are not seeing education as a priority because their children outside. Can they just do what the, 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 the revered architect, you know, Alex Equeme did? The day that we have leadership that says, if I'm a president, I want my family to be here, to school here while I'm here. I want my, my, my health care to be here while I'm here. In this, The moment we come back to Nigeria to fix Nigeria, we'll have a completely different paradigm 
and an approach and mindset. But for as long as we don't do that, ASU is not giving me the right vibes that I need to hear. All right, if, if you can, in like uh, well 30, 30 to 35 seconds, speak on the um, Trump considering a legal battle as Biden leads in U.S. presidential election. There is no conclusive figures yet. Trump is a businessman, and as a businessman, he's proactive. Trump is, a, he has his issues. I mean, he's uh, moral or whatever, but in terms of business, Trump, Trump sees, he walks two steps ahead. You know that before, long before now, when they were talking of the males, he started attacking the males. That's because he's done his strategic analysis. He's laid his background well. He sees tomorrow coming. He knows where his weaknesses are. He knows where his strengths are. He's done his SWOT analysis. That man is a businessman, okay? And he approaches governance like business, not like politics. So he is like putting you ahead before you even get there. And look at what's happening. He's getting the votes, but as the male votes start to come in, his numbers start to go down. So he will tell you, I had told you before these guys were trying to rig this thing, we've got to stop it. And he's trying to take legal action. America is never going to be the same again. Democracy has got to change. And I hope we learn a few things as leaders, how to be proactive. You know, it could be an evil genius, but the fact remains that this man knows where he is going to, and he knows where his base is and what to do. All right. Uh, let's move over to the Daily Sun. Let's see what we can find over there. Most of the stories on the Daily Sun have already uh, uh, sh showed up in other uh, newspapers this morning, but there's one of them there that is pretty interesting, about two Nigerians winning uh, seats U in the yes. uh, U.S. State, uh, State Assembly. Assembly. Pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if those people would have stood a chance here in Nigeria. Uh, but but, but just beneath it, sadly, is the story of uh, a medical doctor, three others kidnapped in yeah. ca uh, Calabar. Sadly. Uh, doctors embark on, on indefinite strike to uh, protest uh, incessant abduction. Sadly. Um, it also says here, we can't afford $110 billion for revitalization of Varsity's federal government tells ASU. Um, I'm looking out for stories that we haven't already spoken about. Um, of course, the Lekki Togate shooting, Southwest ministers demand probe of military's role. But the one that I w would like us to speak is uh, on the governor, Songwo Lu, uh, signing an executive order to rebuild Lagos. Um, lastly, uh, Oibo, we won't abandon Igbo in rivers, says uh, Ornez and Igbo. All right, so um, Ezekiel, I, talk. I, I, I want us to speak on rebuilding Lagos, the executive order, and the uh, story of Nigerians winning U.S. State Assembly seats, medical doctors and three others kidnapped also in uh, Calabar. Yes. Uh, the very ahead. first one is that of Nigerians winning seats, and it's just the same story. Nigerians are excelling anywhere and everywhere in the globe. This is who we are. This is what we have. I dream that day that we have leadership that will harness. That's, in fact, one of my secret weapons for wanting um, Trump to win. I need another few years um, of, of people holding on to their countries and, you know, during this period, I'll tell you this. Go and check the remittances. Nigerians have been really worried about the possibility of leaving the U.S. So a lot of them were coming back home and doing certain businesses so that, man, if this guy drives them, they will have something to do. So his policy kind of helped us a little bit. That's the simple truth. So I wish he would have another four years of driving that policy so that a lot more Nigerians... I, I go to U.S. so often, I mean... In three years, I went about over 20 times. So I, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. And right now, we need more Nigerians to start to think of Nigeria and not less Nigerians starting to think of U.S. But so far, as long the... as Trump is there, less Nigerians are thinking of going to U.S. because they know that that guy takes no prisoners. But it's, then when it's, the doors it's are not open again, the Nigerians, yes, Nigerians fall. Nigerians let us come back, stay in this Nigeria, and fix this Nigeria. Yeah, then but I, I, I just I wanted to quickly also say that it's not the fault of Nigerians um, that they find the United States um, more comfortable to live in and to do business and to thrive. 
Uh, the country here also needs to be fixed to make more Nigerians right. want to come back home. Regardless of what Donald Trump right. does in the U.S., whatever immigration policies he, right. he puts in place, it doesn't change the fact that Nigerians need to find home comfortable to do business and to live and to start a family and to thrive. And if those things are not in place, regardless of what Donald Trump or Joe Biden uh, does, Nigerians would still want a better option. Canada is, is still there taking them immigrants every day. Saudi Arabia is taking a lot of Nigerian pa doctors. Parliament shows. Uh, Parliament shows. It, it's not, it's not uh, Panadol. is not the same thing as Panadol. Nigerians <laughs> just have affinity for America. I'm telling you that for free. But that said, I, I want to um, congratulate the, um, uh, the governor of Lagos State for the executive order to rebuild Lagos really fast, especially after the little blunders here and there. He needs something to redeem his image. And I think that that Lagos is a commercial nerve center. So anything to bring Lagos back and let it bubble again is good for Nigeria because Lagos gives us so much of the facts which we share to everybody, which I think is unfair to start with. I think that for VAT alone, Lagos should keep 50% of VAT and then share the rest. But when you do so much and then you share to everybody, it's not inspiring. People should be in courage to make their environment be, to thrive so much so that they can get so much VAT and retain 50% of that VAT. It's a policy that the federal government should consider. All right, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Yertok, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast and always, always sharing your talk. By the way, congratulations and happy <laughs> wedding anniversary <laughs> again. <laughs> Have a good time. I I know the lady will not miss that. Of I course, I you. cannot <laughs> miss that. Say congratulations <laughs> to your wife as well. Thank you. I show you. Have a good day. I, I think one thing that, um, I think the way I understood what he was saying was that he, he, he is not wanting Trump to win because, uh, maybe because he likes Trump so much, that might be part of it, but the fact that his immigration policy is compelling Nigerians to come back home and invest here and think of ways they can survive here in spite of the situation. Because if you say that your home front is not good enough for you, who will fix it when you continue to stay abroad? So uh, I, I, that's the perspective I think um, uh, he was trying to, and I totally align with it in that regard, that mm. they come back home. We have to fix our own home going away thriving somewhere else and your home is in shambles like the situation is if trump wins again and his immigration policies become tougher you are going to come back here whether you like it or not except maybe you've become a u.s citizen it's a, it's so. a great point no doubt but if it's not the u.s it's canada if it's not canada it's south africa if it's not south well africa, if we keep Saudi running Arabia, uh, but i i um, had this conversation as much as i hold no grudge to anyone i would probably consider it if i had the option but if we all keep running, who will fix our home? That is the question we keep asking. You want to harness the brains that have thrived abroad, but how can you do that when we are not even ready to how, welcome uh, them? How, how, do you, how do you expect Nigerians coming home to fix Nigeria? In what ways do you think they should step in to fix Nigeria? That's a question we all have to collectively it's think not, it's about. Not about. I'm not saying they have some magic wand or anything. I'm just yeah. trying to reiterate the fact that it is a collective effort if we must build Nigeria. So, it, I and mean, I I'm not going to tell them what to do. It's their home. I agree. If I, they find I'm, a place they can chip in, like we talked about with Ife earlier, you yeah. know, celebrities taking to politics, becoming a bit more invested in what is happening with the leadership. We had the end SARS protest. Look at it however you want. To look at it. I think even even Nigerians outside the country miss Nigeria. Oh they, yes. They they are in those countries because of how it is down here. So it's not because they hate the country. It is because they've realized that they would rather just have the peace of mind that they seek somewhere yeah. else and and pursue their goals and their dreams in those places. No matter how many people run back home, if you don't have a government that is looking forward to creating a better environment down here. You're going to have more people down here angry. You're going to have more people down here frustrated. And that's why they run away to find it somewhere else. Look at what we're uh, simply asking. I mean, look at what the last few weeks. 
with the number of people who came out seeking um, to put an end to police brutality, look at how it turned out. There's still, you know, issues we're seeing should today we with the panel leave? of inquiry. Should, then, we now, should we now run with our tails between our I'm legs? Not, I'm, it, it's just, great to that, sound. I mean, you're helping me um, it's ask great to the sound, question. You know, patriotic and, <laughs> it, and promote, it, you know, loving your country and staying back here to fight for it. But there's always a bar to Saudi. There's always a bar. I, I mean, but I agree with you. I'm just, I'm just mean. saying, if it's not, if it's not the yeah. US, it's going to be Saudi Arabia. If it's not Saudi, it's going to be the UK. If it's, if it's not UK, it's going to be Australia. It's going to be Canada. People will continue to find. All right, I, I, it's been an engaging uh, two hours. Uh, we've been uh, talking from the NSAS protests to the U.S. presidential election to you know fixing our economy, our debt profile. So we, we we keep intending to borrow, and the efforts of the Lagos state government to try and rebuild. Uh, we've also seen the uh, submission of some ministers to help the Lagos state government rebuild some of these key infrastructure. Uh, that was destroyed during the end SARS protest. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.